Paul is a senior plant pathologist with the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries based at the Ecosciences Precinct in Brisbane. And Paul is going to talk today about lettuce necrotic yellows virus. Are you ready? Over to you, Paul. Thank you, Heidi. Um, this is work done under part of the area-wide management uh, project for vegetables, uh, viruses and bacteria. So what is lettuce necrotic yellows virus? Uh, if you put it under a super fancy electron microscope, it looks like that on the left. Some round bacteria looking particles and some little round spherical things when you chop it in half. It's actually more like an insect virus than it is a plant virus. And we'll get into that a little bit later. It's actually really important in the epidemiology. But if you do some fancy genome analysis, it's down here in the little pinky box under cytorhabdoviruses, it's the LMYV there. There's a couple of other plant ones down below it in the blue and the yellow, but if you go up, that's rabies virus and bat lysivirus and things like that. So it's in a fairly unique group of viruses and it's one of the few that actually infect plants. But, you know, just maybe don't let your dogs eat their sad looking lettuces in your field, you might get in trouble. Okay, sorry, here we go. What it looks like in the field can usually start with some little necrotic symptoms on your little necrotic lesions on your um, leaves. And in some varieties, like a browning up the stem. And as it gets further, it they all have a lie down and look pretty terrible, really. Um, fairly necrotic through the top section and a lot of the leaves lie down. It has a flaccidity about it so that the whole head collapses of the lettuce as well. Um, if you look in the top left picture, there's a lot of older infections where the, the lettuce matured quite well, but there's a lot of really small stunted plants, which is where they got infected very early. So where does LMYV come from? It's mainly through weeds. It's in South Thistle, it's in prickly lettuce, and we found it in London Rocket. And all of these have mild or no symptoms at all. The aphids transmit it, and we'll get into that in a second. And they can come from a long distance away and or just from weeds right next door. It is not seed borne, and it is not really mechanically transmissible in lettuce. There are reports that it does happen, but it's like one or two out of a hundred plants. So it's not going to, driving the tractor down the field is not going to spread it from lettuce to lettuce. It just will not happen. So South Thistle is the main host of this virus, and it's the main host of the vector. Those pictures, everyone should know what South Thistle looked like. Um, starts off as a rosette form down in the bottom left and grows up to bolts with flower heads, usually covered by these little green aphids that you can see here. Um, and usually as the season progresses, they die off and then the aphids fly off and look for something else to eat. So prickly lettuce and London rocket, we've also found as hosts of the virus. I'm pretty sure that neither of these are hosts of the aphid to any large extent. And so they are basically a terminal host, similar to lettuce. So it's spread by the South Thistle aphid, Hypermyces lac2k. It takes, after feeding on an infected plant, it takes five days at 28 degrees to be able to spread the virus. And it takes 18 days at 15 degrees, so a lot longer. In between that, it's you know just a sliding scale. So it takes that long to circulate within the aphid, actually reproduce in the aphid and make its way back to the salivary glands where it's able to infect other plants. So if you have an aphid that just pops into your crop, eats an infected plant, pops onto another plant, it's not gonna spread the virus. It needs at least five days at nearly 30 degrees to be able to spread the virus. So it's a persistently transmitted virus, which means it replicates and spreads throughout the insect 
and once it has the virus in the insect, it's going to keep spreading that virus until the aphid dies. Luckily, it shaves about a day off its life cycle if it's infected with virus. So you get a little bit of a reprieve there. It can infect baby aphids through the eggs at about a rate of 20%. So 20% of the eggs laid by an infected aphid will have the virus. And that will go on for at least two or three generations. So the virus does not need the host plant to survive. It can just be passed down through aphid to aphid. So the aphids also viviparous, which means it gives birth to live young, and therefore all of the young of an infected aphid will have infected young. So, and wing forms of this aphid develop once they get higher population densities or the host plant starts to decline. So if you go and look at your sow thistle and you just see a couple of aphids sitting on there, you'll be okay. It's as they start to completely dominate the flower stems that they start to produce winged forms that will fly off and get into your crops. So the epidemiological cycle, there's the sow thistle up in the top left, that's the primary host, and an infected aphid will land on one of those, feed on it, it takes a few days, probably about four days for the virus to really kick off in the host plants there. And then it can infect other aphids and around and around it goes with that latent period that we talked about. So depending on the weather and the temperature and things like that, it passes fairly quickly and then you end up with winged aphids and your, your south is all starting to die because there hasn't been rain for a little while. Then they go looking for something green to eat and end up in your lettuce crops and start probing and going, no, I don't like that. Jump off onto another plant, have a probe, no, I don't like that. And it takes less than a minute for this aphids to transmit the virus to a lettuce plant. So you can sometimes you can see at the edge of a crop where a single aphid has just hopped from plant to plant, infecting it as it goes. They don't like lettuce, so they don't actually pick up the virus from inside the crop. So there's all spread of virus is from outside the crop in. So what are our management options for this? There's not much host resistance available. It's not a huge problem, so they look at screening it other times. Um, general insect control, you really need to keep those aphids down, but again, general insect control inside the crop is not going to help in this situation. You really need to control the weeds. And especially the south thistle, if you can knock them off with herbicide before they flower, that'll be perfect. Or think about actually spraying insecticide to the south thistle to knock them down before they start to dry off and send flights into your crops. Uh, they think the outbreaks back in the 1960s down in South Australia, there was huge outbreaks of lettuce necrotic yellows virus. And they think it's because of myxomatosis being brought into the rabbits and the rabbits weren't around to eat the south thistles. So the south thistle population exploded, huge numbers of aphids with virus moving into the crops. Uh, there are biocontrol agents, and I think Lara's going to talk about them later. Uh, there's some parasitic wasps that actually affect hypermyces and they can be a viable option. They are naturally occurring in the Lockyer Valley, and I think they're released nearly all over Australia. But again, if the weather's in the right time to get the aphids going quickly, the control agents might not have time to catch up. And just as a thing, they're not alone out there. So lettuce necrotic yellows is out there and spread by aphids. There's also turnip mosaic, it's also spread by aphids. Turnip yellow spread by aphids, cauliflower mosaic. Tomato spotted wilt, which is spread by thrips. And they're pretty, these are all pretty much widespread wherever you find lettuce growing, you'll probably find these viruses. And they can look very similar. So you always get stunting, yellowing, little bits of the leaves dying here or there. Um, there are differences that you can tell once you get your eye in for things, you can go, oh yeah, that's LMIV or that's turnip mosaic. Um, 
but until you get your eye in, send samples in for diagnostic testing and you get the result back, go, oh yeah, that it was LMIV or no. Or it could be both, you never know. There's all sorts of crazy things going on out there. So yeah, the, the example here is tomato spotted wilt in lettuce, which looks a lot like LMIV in lettuce. I don't know, sometimes I still have to do the tests. So what are the take home messages from this? Try and do diagnostics to help get your eye in. So sending the grow help if you're in Queensland or your local ag department if you're elsewhere, just to check if there is LMIV in there. As part of the area-wide management project, we do do vegetable diagnostics for free. So don't worry about sending them into that. Just keep a lookout of what's actually happening in your lettuce crops. If you see one or two, that's not great, but it takes three weeks lag time. So you're looking at, you know, by the time you start looking in the crop, you probably might have missed it. Just keep looking in the south thistle. It's a fairly easy epidemiological cycle. So there's one vector, there's one main host, which is the south thistle weed, and lettuce is a terminal host. So once it gets into lettuce, it's not going to get out and go around to the next crop plant. So if you can keep your weeds under control mainly, and then second to that, if you can keep the aphids under control in the weeds. Um, you know, slashing the paddocks beside your lettuce before you put your lettuce in so they're not flying off. Like, or, you know, it's that burning off of the weeds or slashing them that makes the aphids move into your crop. So try not to do that as well while you're putting a new crop in. And just keep in touch with this, tell us what's happening out there. It's good to know if there is large epi, um, outbreaks of this virus that's happening in the area. Thanks to vegetable growers and the governments.